Does this record? Oh yeah, it's on. What's up? Hey, I'm getting a little bit more comfortable with this recording stuff. I've got a couple of videos under my belt. I'm kind of getting the hang of it. I'm moving around trying to see what's the best lighting in this house. And uh, I think it's it's going to be uh, better than some of the other ones I've done. I'm starting to understand how this stuff works now. But anyhow, what I want to talk to y'all about today is uh, my experience with doing the Apollo, Showtime at the Apollo, at the uh, famous Apollo Theater in Harlem, New York. It was my first time actually going to New York City. I didn't really know what to expect. And to be honest with you, I wasn't nowhere near ready to do the Apollo. Um, Steve Harvey was the host at the time. As a matter of fact, Steve, the one that got me on the show, I didn't have to send in nothing. I didn't have to audition or nothing, man. He just talked to the people and told them that um, I would be good for the show. So they uh, took his word for it, and they flew me in, and um, I stayed at the uh, Roosevelt Hotel, if I'm not mistaken. I, it's, been a, it's been a long time. Man. It was in the 90s sometime. But I stayed at the Roosevelt Hotel in Central Park. It's an old, old, old hotel, man. Steve was actually standing there himself. He was standing there and with his uh, girl, Mary. I think that was his third wife, the one that was from Dallas. But um, uh, when it was time to go to the show, you're supposed to catch a cab to go up to Harlem and do the show. But I knew Steve, and he was standing down the hall. So I called his room. I said, hey, man, can I get a ride with you to the show? He said, uh, hey, man, um, the uh, limo is for me and my girl, man, and you. <laughs> you supposed to catch a cab, man. He said, but all right, man, you can ride. You can ride uh, with us. So I rode to the... Uh, I rode to the show with him in his uh, limo, and before the uh, show, he gave me some advice. He said, Kang, because that's what he called me. He didn't call me King or John, he called me Kang, K-A-N-G. He said, Kang, he said, now, this 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 audience that is like none other than you probably done faced before. He said, this is a whole different ball game up here in New York. He said, when you go up, man, he said, the jokes that you do, they got to be believable. He said, don't go up there trying to tell no jokes that it's not believable. If they can't believe that the subject matter that you're talking about really happened, they're going to boo you. So uh, being the knucklehead that I am, because I had been doing comedy, I don't know, 10, 12 years at the time, I figured, hey, man, I'm a pro. I know what to do. So I went up there and... At the time, Michael Jordan was in the news for gambling, and they said that he owed some gambling debts. So the first thing that came out of my mouth was, is Michael Jordan in here? I said, if y'all see him, told him I won't tell him I want my money that he owed me from a gambling debt. And the crowd said, boo! <laughs> man, they booed me right out of the back, man. But the um, the uh, lady that booked me on the show, she had warned me up front. She said, look, she said, there's a good chance that you're going to get booed because most of the comedians get booed. So the microphone that you are talking in is a mic that will only pick up what's close to it. So you just keep doing your jokes uh, just like you ain't getting booed. Because what we can do later is we can come back. And we can do what they call sweetness. And we can add some laughter from somebody's show that did do well. So, so she said, whatever you do, just don't, don't, don't stop. Don't get frustrated. Just keep doing your material and we'll sweeten it for you later. And, uh, man, after, after getting booed at the Apollo, man, I forgot about all of that. So I tried to do a few more jokes. Boo! And... Because I was uh, one of the featured performers, I was a professional. It wasn't amateur night, so it wasn't no sand, man, to uh, come out there and 
hook you off the stage or nothing like that. It's just, you know, you either stand up there and take it or you leave. I don't know. It seemed like an eternity, man. It probably was less than two minutes. And I uh, bailed. I bailed out. And, man, that was one of the hardest uh, things for me to do, man. That, that, that shit hurt my feelings, first of all. I guess because it was the Apollo and it was so famous and it was like uh, the audience was, it had to be at least 80% black. There was some white people and some Hispanic people in there, but I, it was kind of hard to tell. But it was um, it was interesting and a, a hell of an experience, man. And the thing about the Apollo is they take a whole season in one day. I'll take it back. They take about five shows in one day. They take, take the whole season in about two weeks. So they don't sell tickets. They give them away. So the people line up outside. And when all the tickets are going, all the seats are filled, they cut it off. So that audience that you get is there for five shows that day. And they selling, they got a bar in the back, man. There's a window where they sell alcohol. And people was in the bathroom smoking weed and and they getting high off or whatever the hell they drug of choice is. I'm not saying that everybody was, but I smell a lot of weed there and I saw a lot of people getting drinks. So you got a you got a crowd man that's in there all day. They uh, tradition is the the boo the comics that they don't like. If they don't like what you wearing, you get you get booed. They been they they restless, they tired, and also they 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 found out that they can get camera time if they you know make a lot of noise or boo or anything that's um, that's not subtle or quiet. So they raise all the hell they can man to get that uh, camera to get that camera time when the show is actually uh shown so uh then too i had to follow stephanie mills the the great stephanie mills man she was at she was in her prime she was at the height of her uh popularity at the time she went on right before me after she went off man then they brought me up Damn, they don't know me from Jack in New York, man. I'm just some unknown comic, man. But it was interesting, man, because they they wasn't just booing me, man. It was booing damn near everybody. If you wasn't famous and if you weren't bringing it like they wanted it, there's a good chance you was gonna get booed. So it was an, it was it was a tra traumatic experience for me. I got through it, and. Um, I should have probably went back and redeemed myself, but man, I was so traumatized. I didn't want no parts of going back. I just took it for what it was and chalked it up for experience and moved on down the road. Uh, I'm going to cut it off right here, man, because I'm already at eight minutes and maybe I'll uh, splice this in half, man, and do it in two parts. All right, man, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I could think of that was interesting while I was doing Showtime at the Apollo. That's about it. I'm going to cut it off right there. Take care.